You're listening to Jet Nation Radio, the official podcast of JetNation.com. The largest independent fan site in the NFL. Be sure to check out our forums and talk all things Jets with thousands of other diehard Jets fans. Now to get you up to date on all the latest Jets news, notes, and quotes, here are your hosts, Glenn Naughton, Dylan Terriman, and Alex Varallo. Good evening, Jets fans. I am Glenn Naughton. This is Jet Nation Radio. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. And uh, week one is upon us, everybody. We finally, finally have an actual, real, live NFL football game uh, just over the horizon. Sunday Sunday at 1 o'clock, Jets-Panthers, Darnold versus Wilson and Wilson's NFL debut. Um, can't be much more excited than this. This is a game where there are some some pretty favorable matchups for the Jets. We'll get to that in a little bit. Before we get started, just wanted to take a second to thank our sponsor, Mile Social. Uh, Mile Social, as you know, if you're a listener to this show, has been with us for quite some time. They uh, they basically, what Mile Social does, if you are a business owner, be it small, medium, large, and you're looking for someone to help you manage all of your social media platforms, Mile Social is the company to do it for you. So check them out at milesocial.com. That's M-I-L-E social.com. Whether it's TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, uh, what, are, what are all the other ones? Snapchat, whatever it may be. Uh, any any platform, whatever you're on, Mile Social has got you covered. So, uh, so give them a shout. And uh, also, for those of you who are not on the forums at JetNation.com, you need to be on the forums at JetNation.com. Especially with the uh, with the season about to kick off on Sunday, it's going to be you know we always get a, a surge of registrations around this time of year, and uh, we get the game threads. You know the game threads go on forever. A lot of great conversation as you get throughout the year. Um, uh, you know off season, regular season, one of the busiest team sites, one of the busiest sites that is not run by a team uh, in the NFL. And you know I, I don't really check that often, but. Anytime I've taken a look, there's really not another site that comes close to the the uh, the traffic and activity that we get at JetNation.com. So lots and lots and lots of people uh, on the forums uh, learned a lesson this week. Well, I shouldn't say learned a lesson. It's not as if we don't know this already. But man, every now and then you get you get something that really just kind of smacks you back into reality, and you kind of you forget how complacent you become. Uh, I know for me, you know, as I said, spend millions of hours on JetNation.com. Uh, and this isn't Jets related as much as, you know, letting people know when you're going to be on these forums. Uh, just remember, there there's some pretty shady characters out there. Uh, we had a guy this week who's been on the forums for like 10 years or something like that. And uh, and these, these, this is all free of charge. Uh, the guy who runs all this, who who is the man behind Jet Nation Radio, the man behind JetNation.com, who has run used that platform and that site to run you know uh, uh, run drives to raise money for people in need for kids at Christmas and things like that? Um, he uh, he's had the misfortune of his wife having to deal with a third bout of breast cancer in eight years, which is just I couldn't begin to imagine uh, living in that world. Um, but he just presses on and does an amazing job with with everything from this to being a dad to working, you know, a million hours at his job. Uh, his name's Phil. Great guy. He's not like a lot of the guys who own the sites. He doesn't want the spotlight. He doesn't want people looking at him and he's not trying to build his brand. And he just wants a place for people to talk and listen about, you know, Jets football. Uh, so anyway, uh, long story short, um, as his battle, it, it, you know, his battle goes on, uh, one of our, one of our members who he's known for years, uh, approached him and said, "Look, I know this isn't generally your thing. You've never done this, but this is a rough patch. Let's let's do a fundraiser for you. You've done them for other people in the past when they were suffering or going through a hard time." And the the board route, the, the message board, the guys on there rallied around. We all donated. Well, a bunch of us donated, um, and he he came away with a nice chunk of money. And and you know he was very grateful. You know, thanked all of us many times over, and that was the end of it. Um. Well, at the end of the, the, the money side, you know, his, his wife is still going through her chemo and, you know, our, our thoughts are with Lauren as she goes through all this, uh, you know, the, the, the strength she's shown through all this has been incredible. Um, so why am I talking about this? Because, uh, 
you do, again, you forget what, what horrible, horrible human beings there are out there in the world. Um, one of the people who donated money um, and did the whole, the, you, know, um, you know, my prayers are with you, and as if this was coming from a genuine place, um, thought, I think my, my impression, this is my best guess, was under the impression that by giving money to JetNation.com um, for this, this fundraiser, that he would then have carte blanche and could speak to people however, however he wanted on JetNation.com, which wasn't the case because these were two separate things. There was JetNation.com, which is there are rules in place and you follow them. And then there was a fundraiser, which was, you know, on the site, but not related to the web, you know, the site itself. Um, so this guy just started acting like a maniac uh, and, and talking down to people and really tons of complaints were lodged. And Phil said, you know what, this guy's been kind of doing this for close to a decade now. Uh, they've kind of lost count of the number of complaints they've gotten about him. And they just, Jet Nation very rarely bans anyone. They just don't ban anybody. Um, you really have to cross a line to get banned. Um, and the moderators all discussed it amongst themselves. They said he, he's gone too far. We're getting too many complaints. He's he's bringing down the entire message board. Um, you know, and, and they, they banned him. And that was that. Um, so then the guy apparently was one of the people who donated money. He goes to Twitter and says, I want my money back from the cancer donation. Because, you know, because I was an asshole on your message boards, I now want my money back uh, that I gave to a, a, a fundraiser to treat your wife who's going through chemo. Uh, actually, was was messaging, harass, sending harassing messages to Phil while he was in the hospital with his wife getting her chemo. Um. And then because the universe is a, a terrible place sometimes, uh, two days after that, Phil had to put his dog of 14 years, uh, had to put his dog down. And the guy was sending him harassing messages while that was going on. So obviously Phil had other things to deal with. Anyway, long story short, there, the, the GoFundMe thing, there was no proof the guy donated anything. But because Phil is a gem of a human being, uh, the guy claimed he gave $207. Phil gave him back 300 He's like, here's your money. God bless. Take care. Uh, Phil's a better person than I am. Because um, this guy's an asshole. And he doesn't deserve any God bless or anything like that as far as I'm concerned. But that's Phil's thing. Like I said, better person than me. Um, so then this guy takes it to the next level and, and, and starts messaging Jet Nation to tell us that uh, Phil's wife does not have cancer. And that it's all fake. And it's all fraudulent. So um, some horrible, horrible human beings out there, folks. Absolutely horrible human beings, uh, narcissists who believe the world revolves around them. This guy clearly felt that was the case, that by me giving money, I'm now allowed to say whatever I want, however I want, to whoever I want on the message board that you've been providing me free access to for 10 years. Um, and if you try to hold me to the same standard that you hold everyone else, I'm going to demand my money back that I donated and um, and then I'm going to accuse you and your family of staging a third bout with breast cancer in eight years. Um, we don't have any um, any official uh, uh, segments on this show, but uh, maybe maybe we should start like a douchebag of the year award. Um, and the the and so the, the the recipient of the first ever Jet Nation Radio douchebag of the year award goes to uh, his screen name I believe is Defense Wins Championships. Uh, so DWC. Uh, uh, dealing with chlamydia, whatever it stands for. Um, congratulations. First ever Jet Nation Radio Douchebag of the Year Award. Um, so that's that. I didn't want to go too long on that, but I, I literally, no no joke, I, uh, I read that, I read his demand to have his money back while I was leaving work at whatever, 7 a.m. the other day, and halfway home I had to, I had to pull over and, uh, and, and contact Phil and, Catch my breath, because uh, you know attacking a friend whose family is going through this is. Uh, d d there are human beings on this planet who will sink to the depth that some of us will never be able to comprehend, no matter how hard we try. Um, and that's kind of where we are. But on the upside, everyone else on JetNation.com is not that guy. Um, lots of great, great people, great community, and a as evidenced by the money that was raised. When Phil's wife was ill, the number of people who have come to his defense and spoken up uh, about this guy, and uh, that's uh, that's the end of that. That's we're gonna we're gonna wrap that up. But um, 
uh, a couple people contacted me and asked me because he, he sent his messages and he deleted all of them when we were calling him out on Twitter and people were messaging me to ask me why, you know, what's going on? Who is this person? So I thought, you know what? I'll just address it real quick on the show and be done with it. So that's that, folks. Uh, time for football talk. Um, week one, Jets, Panthers, Darnold, key matchups. Uh, now, some of the matchups are unknown up to this point because Robert Sala met with the media and he would not divulge who his starting corner, uh, who starting cornerback would be opposite Bryce Hall. And he did not say who his starting right tackle would be, whether it's Morgan Moses or George Fant. Uh, so my, my two predictions that I'm throwing out there on this one, I think the starting quarter is Brandon Eccles. Uh, I've heard a few fans, uh, uh, one of the beat writers, say that they thought or think it should be Javelin Guidry. I don't see that at all. I mean, and I could be wrong, but Guidry is a guy who – exclusively played the slot last year, exclusively played the slot in camp, exclusively played the slot in preseason games. It's built for the slot. And Eccles, meanwhile, is the – and someone said, uh, you got to start Gidry. He's the faster guy. Well, he is, but, I mean, we're talking six hundredths of a second. I think, if I'm not wrong, Gidry ran a 4-3 um, at the Combine, and Eccles ran a 4-3-6. And Robbie Anderson ran a 4-3-6. Like, that's the concern. Who's going to match up with Robbie Anderson? It's got to be Guidry. He can run with him. Well, Eccles can run with him, too. Eccles ran a 4-3-6. Eccles, to me, is the starter. I, like I said, I could be wrong. But he's, he's the only guy. You know, listen, pre, it's three games now. We see three games. Guys get very little opportunity to flash because no one's playing every snap. You can be a corner. You might get 20 reps a game, and you might get targeted once or twice. Unless you're Isaiah Dunn and you keep giving up you know, catches, you're going to get targeted a million times. But Eccles, look, he, he broke up a pass deep down the field against the Giants. He had an inter- interception against the Packers. Um, so he's the only guy who has made a couple of plays on the ball. Um, and I said two, three weeks ago, I thought, you know, this guy should be the starting corner opposite Hall. So I'm sticking with that prediction. I think it's going to be Eccles and Hall. Maybe it's Pinnock. I don't, we'll, maybe it's Gidry. Maybe I'm a dummy and I'm overthinking things and it's Gidry, but I just don't see that happening. Uh, and at right tackle, I think it's going to be Moses. I know folks said, but, uh, you know, but Fant got more reps in the preseason. That's, that's not always a good thing. Sometimes teams are, you know, a lot of times those guys that are playing a ton of reps, it's because teams want to see what they can do if and when they need them, and they kind of know who their starters are, they know what the starters can do, so they don't see the field as much. They want to keep them healthy. But Fant was getting time at right tackle, at left tackle, playing deep into the third game. You don't, you know, you might do that with a starter, maybe a guy who's coming back from an injury and you want to get him some extra reps. You know, that may happen. Um, but generally, your starters don't play a whole lot, and, and Moses hardly played at all in the preseason and it, you know, the thing, and I've said this before, the reason I would be so surprised if Moses wasn't the starter is that because he has the resume he has and because he played or because he had so many suitors in free agency, I would have thought the team he signed with was a team where he said, I'm coming there to be the starter. Um, And maybe he didn't, maybe, maybe he had multiple suitors, but no one, obviously he didn't get a huge deal. So maybe nobody was blowing him out of the water, and he had to kind of give a little. And uh, this is one spot, though, where I just I feel like his history, his performance is better than Fant. But at the same time, if we look at the big picture, Fant moves better than Moses. You know, there was a, I said when Moses hit free agency, great player, would love to have him, but I don't see the Jets going after him. I don't think he fits what they do. And then they went out and got him. So I, I'm, I'm, calling, him, I'm, I'm calling it that he's going to start. But if Fant starts, uh, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be as surprising as it would be if Gidry were to start. So I'm call I'm saying Eccles and Moses are the starters, and uh, that's that'll basically set the starting twenty two. There's really no other question marks um, as long as everybody's healthy. Uh, the team also I wanted to touch on the practice squad, um, which we uh, we were waiting for that to set itself before we went over it on last week's episode. So the Jets brought back, you know, as is often the case, there's, you know, plenty of familiar faces and one or two guys who 
who stick around that we didn't necessarily expect to, but they found a way. Um, and congrats to them. So uh, one guy uh, who, you know, I discussed it before and, and said, he, you know, he may actually make the practice squad, uh, Grant Hermans, the tackle, tip of the cap to him. Uh, love being wrong when I say a guy won't make it. Um, Hermans was a guy that I watched pre-draft, came away thinking uncoordinated, clumsy, not really an NFL prospect. Um, he did say, I, I wish I could remember which games I watched, because uh, I did see him in an interview with Dennis Wozak of the Associated Press, uh, where he said he went through some really, really significant health issues um, during his time at Purdue um, and had some moments where he wasn't playing at his best. And I thought, well, you know what? I only watched two or three games. Is there a chance? I mean, there obviously is a chance that those happen to be some of the games where he was battling through some some health issues. So maybe he didn't look to be look as good as he would have otherwise. But uh, also on the practice practice squad, we've got Ronald Blair, the defensive end the Jets picked up from uh, who played for Robert Sala previously with the 49ers. Adrian Colbert, uh, safety uh, product out of Miami, he was just picked up recently. They picked up a couple safeties because they elevated. Um, uh, was it Redwine and Adams were elevated to the active roster, so they added a couple safeties to the practice squad because that's where those guys were. Lamar Jackson, the corner out of Nebraska. He's a guy I've said before I think might be better suited for safety as well, but at least you don't really need 85 safeties on the practice squad at the moment. Josh Johnson, glad to see him back. Um, as many of us noted during the preseason, he only got a handful of reps in that third game, but he looked like the most seasoned, game-ready guy there. Um, and even though he hasn't played a ton, he's been around for a million years, and you like to have a guy like that for uh, Zach Wilson, who, who we might have some questions for. DJ Montgomery, glad to see that guy stick. Um, always love the developmental guys who can take the top off the of defense on your practice squad. Montgomery is one of those guys. I think he's based on whether or not you believe. I don't even remember where his forty came from. If it was a pro day or something like that, but I want to say he ran like a four two nine or like low four threes, and uh, and he had some moments in camp where he looked really good. Jimmy Murray, the backup O lineman, uh, guy the Jets snagged a couple of years ago from the Chiefs. Delshawn Phillips, a linebacker from Illinois. I highlighted him a little bit during the preseason, uh, during the off season. I was actually watching, I forget, I might, may have been Eifler. I was watching somebody and, um, and Delshawn Phillips popped up and, uh, no, sorry. No, I was looking up Phillips himself because Eifler and him weren't there together at that time. Um, anyway, uh, Hamlakar Rashid, he's a guy that a lot of us, you know, a lot of people thought would make the roster, thought he had a good shot, ends up sticking on the practice squad. So good for him. Tanzel Smart, I highlighted several times on Twitter and on the, the forums at jetnation.com. Um, Tanzel Smart, uh, I mean, the guy, he just, he had a fantastic preseason. The guy was consistently, um, disrupting plays in the backfield, drawing, holding plays, holding penalties, first guy off the ball. And I, I kind of, I said in, in the forums on Jet Nation, I was like, I don't know how they're going to not keep this guy. Um, and honestly, I'm surprised someone didn't snag him based on how he played. It'll be interesting to see during the season. If a couple of teams get through some Jets uh, preseason film um, and decide they want to snatch him away. Vincent Smith, this was a real surprise to me. Um, I said months ago that I wanted either Vincent or Jeff Smith to make this roster. Because we were hearing Vincent Vincent Smith's name so much through the press, I just assumed he was the guy who was going to get that spot. Um, And I thought Jeff Smith would be the guy to go to the practice squad. Turns out Jeff sticks. Vincent's on the practice squad. You have to imagine he's the first receiver up. If anybody, if anybody gets dinged up, um, Isaiah Williams, offensive lineman, he sticks along with Jared Wilson, another safety. He's a Michigan product. Kenny Yaboa, preseason superhero. Uh, he finds he, he finds his way back to the practice squad. A lot of people thought he would make the active roster. And then Jabari Zuniga, uh, last year's second round pick, sorry, third round pick, 79th overall. Um, I got to be honest, folks, I'm, I'm not inspired by Jabari Zuniga. Um, having watched every single snap he played last season, um, at no at no time did he make a play that made me say, "All right, that's why they got this guy." Um, he he looked lost. Listen, here's the thing: he 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 might turn out to be a player. He might, but right now, here's what we know about Jabari Zuniga: top 100 pick. So he's he's a premium pick at a premium position, who th- played limited reps last year. Not his fault, but while he was on the field, he looked absolutely terrible. Didn't matter if he was standing up or his hand in the dirt. He looked terrible. Uh, came into preseason, hardly played. 
he didn't even team didn't even want to take a look at him. I think he played nine or ten snaps, whatever it was, in the preseason. Goes on waivers. Again, this is a top one hundred pick at a premium position who has not yet started his second year and thirty one other teams are like, No thanks. He passed through waivers, comes back to the Jets. So every single thing on and off the field regarding Jabari Zuniga tells us he's not good. But listen, some guys take takes a little while for that light to go on. So I'm not writing the guy off. I'm just saying he's about as close to being written off as a player can be after one season, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, he Jabari Zuniga, like every other guy on the roster, will be watching and will be rooting and hoping he becomes a, a damn good player. But when you look at the 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 entirety, you look at the big picture, all the evidence, whatever you want to say. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's 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 barely hanging on. I, I don't know how many guys you could take who were taken in the top hundred last year, who would pass through waivers right now if all all of them were to be released. I would imagine the vast majority would be snapped up in a second. So anyway, that's that. That's the practice squad. That's the projected starters. And um, we're going to go now. And by the way, Alex taking a vacation. He's he's taking some time in Florida before the season starts. I get it. And Dylan, uh, as I've said a million times over, has been working like a maniac and is now uh, in the process of moving. So once he is moved and settled into his new location, uh, we will be back to the three of us. I believe Dylan will be joining the show again after week one, um, possibly even either between week one and two or between week two and three. So somewhere in that first few weeks of the season, Dylan will be back and uh, <clears throat> expecting Alex back next week where we will be talking about the Jets Panthers, which we will preview now. So Jets Panthers, where do the Jets, where do the Jets have work to do? Let's, let's first talk about the problems that the Panthers bring uh, to the table. Of course, Christian McCaffrey. Christian, This is why Christian McCaffrey and C.J. Mosley is one of the biggest matchups of this game. You have to imagine Mosley's going to be the guy assigned to him the majority of the time, playing in the middle of that defense. And McCaffrey's a guy coming back from an injury. Um, but there's really, I think the expectation is he will be the same player. And even behind McCaffrey, just even looking at the, the depth chart, uh, Chuba Hubbard is no Christian McCaffrey, but I'll tell you what, that guy, he looked, I, I liked him a lot coming out, liked him as a possible mid-round pick, and uh, he looked fantastic in the preseason. So the Panthers have a couple of backs who can do some damage, but McCaffrey's the guy, of course, out of the backfield as a receiver, does a really good job there. So all the all the linebackers, really, you know, they may attack Sherwood because he didn't look so great in that that last preseason game. Keep an eye on that. If they can get Mosley blocked and isolate Sherwood on McCaffrey, that can be a really difficult time uh, for the Jets' defense. Hamza Nasruddin on the other side, I have a little more confidence in him than I do in Sherwood. But McCaffrey and that Jet, you know, D line it is what it is. Uh, they're going to be a tough group to block. They're going to cause some some difficulty up front for the offense. But if McCaffrey's able to, you know, squirt out into the backfield and and uh, or out of the backfield and into the flat and and make a guy miss, he's a guy who can make some plays, as we well know. And then on the outside, of course, our good friend Robbie Anderson. Robbie, an old favorite of mine, um, thought the Jets should have kept him. They obviously did not. Uh, Joe Douglas himself said that was a big oversight on his part as the GM. Uh, I thought Robbie would be a thousand yard receiver per year guy if he was in a better situation. And last year he broke a thousand. Barely he broke a thousand, thousand ninety six yards and three touchdowns. <clears throat> but we know about the vertical threat. <laughs> Excuse me. We know he's a vertical threat. If you watched him enough, uh, closely enough with the Jets, and then last season, you you can see he does a lot more than that. The casual fans, the guys who watch the highlights, and the you know they only watch the recap and the the Jets videos that they post after the game, and maybe Sports Center. I don't know if Sports Center is even still a thing. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of people think, oh, he just, he just runs deep routes. He just runs deep routes. Completely, completely false. Robbie can do a lot more than that. And I, I, I feel all right with Bryce Hall um, covering Robbie Anderson. Uh, <laughs> but that's about it. Uh, as much as I like Eccles, I mean, listen, the, the theme of this season is going to be grow. Learn, grow, get better. 
This is a ridiculously young team. So I want to see these guys matched up against Robbie Anderson, against DJ Moore, against Terrence Marshall, who's a rookie but a really good player. Um, and it, this, But this is where the Jets are going to be at a disadvantage. You've got Bryce Hall. You've got Eccles. You're probably going to have Guidry at your slot. Uh, you know, your, as your slot corner, he'll probably match up with Shai Smith a little bit. But the uh, the experience isn't there, and we know that. Oh, and we wait and we watch these guys grow and watch them improve. Hopefully, you know that's the plan. You know, Michael Carter might get some run, and 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 I loved Salah's answer uh, the other day because I, I actually had the same thought. I thought, okay, whoever you start, whether it's Echoes, whether it's Pinnock, whether it's Carter, whoever. Um, what do you do if the guy's just out there getting smoked? Um, how long of a leash, I guess, is is what I was thinking. Okay, well, you start, you start, uh, Eccles. How 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 long do you keep him in there if he's struggling? And and Salah gave the answer you want. Like as long as the guy looks confident, as long if his body language tells you he's learning, he's making mistakes, but he's not. He, he the moment isn't too big for him. If his eyes are glossed over and he's got a oh my god, what did I get myself into? Kind of look on his face, then you pull him. But if you see him thinking it through, working through it, talking to him, what did you see? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Okay, what are you going to do next time it happens? If the guy can talk through the mistakes and doesn't look overwhelmed by the moment, leave him in there and let him take his lumps. That's what the season's about. And in all reality, defensive line plays up to its potential, then this shouldn't be an issue. Because nobody in the Jets secondary should have to be covering anyone for more than a couple of seconds. Because this Panthers offensive line might be the worst line the Jets face all year. And this is where the Jets can win this game. Cam Irving is their starting left tackle. Pat Elfline is their starting left guard. Matt Parrott is at center. John Miller is, I believe, he's he's the one that's, he's out. Dennis Daly is starting for Miller. Miller's out. And then Taylor Morton at right tackle. That's an, I thought I thought I read somewhere Christensen might start. But either way, this is not a good offensive line at all. And this is this is here's the bad part of that. The potentially bad part of that. Because I don't know how many of you remember, but I I think I first started having my real legitimate what the hell is going on here concerns about Todd Bowles not just when the Jets were losing football games, but the Jets had a stretch of it seemed like over the course of five, six, seven weeks, they kept running into teams with tons of injuries on the offensive line and teams rolling out two and three backups every week. And the Jets, here they were with, it was Leonard Williams and Mo Wilkerson and uh, Damon Harrison and just this loaded defensive line that was going to be the next big thing. And they would go out there and get stonewalled every week. And I'm sitting there thinking, this guy's a defensive genius. He's got nothing but first-round picks to work with, and he can't get to the quarterback. They can't get to the quarterback. You're playing backups every week. That was the first red flag to me, that I thought, where's this defensive genius who can't figure out a way for his number one overall, you know, his his three, four first-round picks to beat somebody else's third-string guys? Um, So this week, as I said, this is where the Jets can win this game. They have the talent to completely dominate up front on defense. They will have that probably several times this year, but this might be the best opportunity. And if they go out there and they don't, and they they aren't in a position where the Panthers are back on their heels and Sam Darnold is is running for his life every time he drops back, I'll worry a little bit. I'm not gonna. I'm not. No, I'm not saying the damn season's over. But that that would be a little concerning to me. And I think Jets fans, because of the fact that we've spent so long talking about the talent on this D-line, I, I think Jets fans are going to go nuts. And I, I said that a few weeks ago before we knew the Panthers had these injuries. So if the Jets come out and, and this defense doesn't dominate, fans are going to lose their minds. And they really will. Um, because Pat Elfline, I mean, we just we just watched this guy last year. Had a few highlights as a run blocker. As a pass blocker, not very good. I did a D-line video, what is it, uh, 
I, I, I did some pulled some clips and put them on YouTube. Jets defensive line primed to dominate, something like that. Uh, give that a look on YouTube if you want. There's a play on there where Shobin Rankins takes Pat Elfline off his feet and drives him into the backfield. Like, you don't see that a lot in the NFL. You see guys get pushed around and moved and shoved and, you know, you use technique to get, you know, maneuver a guy, put him in a spot he doesn't want to be in. No, he just drove him back and up off of his feet into the backfield. And these are the guys who are starting for for the Carolina Panthers on Sunday. So if Quinn and Williams and Sheldon Rankins, those two guys alone, but then you throw in Foley Fadakasi in the middle, they really better be able to to get after these guys and then see uh, Bryce Huff on the outside wreak a little bit of havoc of his own. Shaq Lawson maybe, we, you know, who knows how much he plays. Uh, he, I mean, he could see quite a bit of play, but they, they – the Panthers had better be panicking on the inside. Um, but again, if you, the, the key is going to be if the Jets can get to these guys, get to get to Sam Darnold without having a blitz, just using your four-man rush, which they should be able to do, then that leaves you the bodies to cover the underneath stuff, which is where Darnold will have to go. Um, and then that brings us back to the the other point. When it's McCaffrey, you got to tackle. So we'll see how that plays out. But that is where the Jets can win this game. And then on the other side of the ball, the Jets are going to be matched up. The Jets are going to have a rookie corner of their own to face in J.C. Horn. So J.C. Horn will be back there along with Dante Jackson, the two starting corners for the Panthers. And they're going to have big, you know, some big-bodied receiver. I don't, I don't know where Keelan Cole and Denzel Mims. I'm curious to see who, who starts and – and who gets the most reps? But you know, Corey Davis is a guy who's gonna he's gonna pose problems for most corners, to be honest. Um, it, it, the combination of of his agility and size, and the way his hands dramatically improved over the years, and the chemistry he was building with Zach Wilson later in camp, I think he's a guy that's gonna pose some problems for them. So look for the Jets to win at the receiver spots, and it all, it's all gonna come down. It's going to come down to the trenches, as I said, and how the Panthers attack Zach Wilson and how that Jets O-line holds up. I don't know about you. I mean, I, I, I know. I do know about you guys. We're all excited to see Elijah Vera Tucker. Can't wait to see him. Um, and if he's, as I've said before, it's you know, you can't expect too much from a guy making his debut. He hasn't played a snap, hasn't played a practice rep, uh, or sorry, a, a preseason rep. So what we're going to get out of Elijah Vera Tucker who knows, just as long as Dan Feeney isn't on the field, I'm happy. Uh, but AVT at left guard, he's going to be a big spot there because if he does struggle, that's where they'll attack. Um, and he may need a game or two or three to, to get settled. And he may come out week one and be good, but not great. So even if he holds up and plays average football, the Jets will be in a really good spot on the O-line. And then, of course, that'll give the receivers the time they need to get open down the field. But, of course, you know, don't forget the fact that this this offense, I, I think I think we're going to see something we've not seen in a long time with the Jets, um, and that is playing to the offense's strengths. I think we're going to see a lot of play action. And let's face it, if this O-line is as good as, as advertised, play action is going to work because it's not going to be Frank Gore picking up 2.7 a carry on first down. This O-line should be able to give the running backs room to work with, putting Zach Wilson in, in, in advantageous positions, allowing him to use play action. I think he's going to roll out a ton. So I think the Jets receivers matching up against these corners give themselves a chance to make some plays as long as the O-line holds up. At tight end, I don't know what to expect. I, I want to, I, I want to say that we're going to see a lot of two tight end sets because I think we are going to see a heavy run game, and both Herndon and Croft can block. I still want to see my guy Herndon get involved. Whether or not that happens, we shall see. But uh, I, I like the Jets' chances against this defense, against this secondary, and it, but it's all going to come down to how well the O line holds up. But at the same time, one of the reasons Zach Wilson is drafted is because his ability to make plays when the O-line doesn't hold up. 
So I'm sure there will be some uh, there will be some 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 bumps along the way, whether whether the team wins or loses. Um, there'll be some bumps along the way to uh, how the O line performs, and when they're not on, will it'll be fun to watch and see how Zach Wilson deals with that. But in terms of a prediction, uh, I just I I can't I can't look at that Panthers O line and know Sam Donald's history and and pick the Panthers. Uh, I am taking the Jets in this one. I think the D line will dominate up front. I'm going to say 27-14 Jets, and I think uh, if if they again if they if they don't find a way to win this game, then it's going to be it's going to be Christian McCaffrey having himself one hell of a day against the Jets defense, and uh, and which again fans will absolutely go bananas, given the fact it will be against uh, it'll be in the opener against the coach who's showing up, and I know he's not the DC, but let's be honest here. Uh, just just like the Rex days, just like the Bulls days, they have coordinators, but they can and will overrule any call they hear that they don't like. Um, at least I would expect them to. Um, so we'll see how it goes, folks. I'm saying Jets win 27-14. I think we're going to see a big day out of the running backs, and that's going to bring us really quick to a few – we do a few bold predictions every year. Uh, that's it, I, um I actually should have messaged the guys for theirs before going live, but we'll uh, we'll just knock out five bold predictions real quick. Um, I think we're gonna see I think we're gonna see Ty Johnson lead this team in rushing. I think he's he's going to, and I've said I've I, for quite some time now that he should be the number one back. I think he will. I think it will be. I mean, we know it's going to be a running back by committee. But I think he is the guy who is going to consistently perform at the highest level. And he will be this team's top running back by the end of the season. Thousand yard guy, because the carries won't be there for that. But I would say seven, eight hundred yards for Johnson this year. Um and l- listen, if he takes over and they start feeding him and, and you know, maybe he gets uh forty five percent of the carries instead of thirty percent, maybe he finds a way. But I'll tell you what, with this downfield blocking of these receivers, we've talked about that, and Johnson's speed, I uh, I'm expecting some big plays out of him this season. Um, and I'm expecting him again to be the top back by the time the season is over. Uh, Zach Wilson, I'm not expecting huge things right out of the gate, but I think by the second half of the season, he's going to be playing at an elite level. Um, now, this is kind of a, a weird, uh, bold prediction because who decides what elite is? Um, well, you decide for yourself. All right. I just think in the second half of the year, once he's kind of been through game prep, seen some NFL looks, faced some quality defenses, I think he's going to uh, I think he's going to take that next step. And I think over the last seven eight games of the year, he's going to be a guy that you look at and think if we extrapolate those numbers over a season, he's a Pro Bowl level quarterback. Uh, and that that's what I'm thinking on Wilson. Elijah Moore will be top three, and this this probably isn't very bold. Let's be honest. Um, Elijah Moore will be top three in the offensive rookie of the year voting because the guy's just electric. I, I, again, I, for me, I've heard a few different names thrown out there for players he reminds you of, but I, I just think again, maybe not quite as thick, but I, I think Odell Beckham when Odell Beckham was Odell Beckham, that that's who he reminds me of just the ability to just make guys miss and the explosiveness, uh, turn on a dime zero to 60 and under a second, I think Elijah Moore is going to be special, and I think we all, listen again. Nothing bold about that, but I'm throwing out the uh, the offensive rookie of the year. I think I'm going to go put a few bucks on him to win rookie of the year. To be honest, um, Bryce Huff is a guy is who's going to line up at that defensive end spot. A lot of attention is going to be drawn inside. I think Huff, if he makes that little leap that year one to year two, and I've said before, I've said many times. Uh, he did some good things on film last year that don't show up in the box score. I think a lot of people underappreciate what he did last season. Um, I'm penciling him in for eight plus sacks. Uh, he only had one or two last year, um, and so that would be a huge leap. But I think Huff is a guy who can get that done. Eight sacks for Bryce Huff, and Hamza Nasruddin, sixth round pick, starting linebacker. I like the guy a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna quite say rookie of the year conversation for him uh but i think he's going to be a guy who picks up 75 plus tackles five plus sacks and uh and and a few interceptions so 
So, you know, maybe two, three picks. So a really solid all-around year for a sixth-round pick. Uh, who came in and stole – I mean, he didn't even really – he kept the job. He was running with the ones from day one, which which had me very excited after watching uh, – when the Jets picked him, I watched quite a few of his games, came away very impressed, loved the idea, the, the, the thought process of let's get some of these safeties, move the linebacker, and get them – uh, you know, get basically make this defense faster. So over the course of a season, we're going to see how teams attack the Jets now. It's fun to say we're going to be faster on defense, but you know what? That also means smaller. So if teams start running out, uh, you know, some bigger blockers, and now you've got Sherwood and Nazardine trying to block guys who weigh 80, 90 pounds more than them uh, as teams try to run the ball down your throat, we'll we'll see how it goes. The, uh, the chess match begins on Saturday, or sorry, Sunday, Jets-Panthers. Uh, very much looking forward to it. I know you guys are too. Zach Wilson, NFL debut. It doesn't get a lot better than this, folks. Um, thank God the stench of Adam Gase is gone. And we finally get to watch a football team play a game under the guidance of a... Of a, a I'm, I'm done calling Adam Gase names. It's all over. He's gone. Um, but just w- watching a competent head coach uh, in Robert Sala. Or, again, that is our expectation. Uh, everything we've seen from him thus far gives us reason to believe he will be. You never saw anything from the last guy that made you think he'd be any good. So that's it. A new era of Jets football kicks off on Sunday at 1 o'clock. We will be tweeting. And quick apology in advance. Uh, we're going to try something new this year. We're going to do a quick uh, video recap post-game. Uh, and we're using me. Uh Tough to look at. Apologies for that, but uh, you know, uh, uh, block out the uh, the, uh, the the screen or whatever you got to do. Listen to the words, ignore the face, and uh, and just enjoy it. I'm looking forward to what should be a very fun season, and uh, looking forward to you know jump on the the, uh, the old Twitter there at AceFan23 uh, at the Terman for Dylan and at NY Jets Life for. At, at NY Jets Life 24 for Alex Morallo and Dylan is at D T E R E M A N. Uh, give us all a follow. We will be uh, we will have plenty of plenty of football to talk this season, plenty to say during games, and we look forward to interacting with each and every one of you. That is it for us this week. Game week, folks. We're only a few days away. Go Jets. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Jet Nation Radio. Glenn is at AceFan23, and Alex is at NYJetsLife24. Until next time, go Jets!